Everybody. I'm Marsha Martin, and I am here today with still Representative Jonathan Singer, uh, and he and I are going to get inside the ballot box about the constitutional amendment uh, about uh, charitable gambling. And because this is the time when all the names and numbers change, uh, I am going to ask Jonathan first to tell us the official nomenclature right here and uh, then tell us a little bit about what the constitutional amendment does and why it's important. Absolutely. So, so I've got a great mnemonic device for all of you. And, and first of all, Marcia, thank you for, uh, for having me on um, because this is going to be a very busy ballot this year. We're going to see a lot of different issues that, that are going to come up. Uh, but this is Amendment C. Just think about C for charity uh, because that's what this is about. Bingo um, proceeds can't be done on a for-profit basis, which means that it goes to your after-school programs, your veteran service organizations, swim clubs, and um, high school marching bands. And so um, just remember, Amendment C for charity, and uh, you'll be on Easy Street. That's, that is wonderful. And then uh, what are the details about this? Because it's not just bingo, we got raffles, We've got all that stuff, and then there is um, language about how um, people who work on the event can be paid or not paid. Sure. No. Well, this does two very simple things. And so uh, first, first thing that it does, and actually I'm going to rewind real quickly and just tell you, it is ridiculous that in the 21st century, Bingo games are regulated in the Colorado State Constitution. Um, that's the reality that we live in. Um, I can't tell you why, uh, because I don't know. It was maybe a good idea 100 years ago, but now it is regulated in the Constitution, which means any changes we make, we have to go to you, the voters. So that's, that's the, um, so I always like to set things up that way. So this does two things, and you now know why it requires a constitutional change. The first thing is, right now, your bingo callers can't get paid. It's unconstitutional. And so we're allowing them to receive reimbursement for up to the value of minimum wage. So if you're driving two, three, four hours sometimes in rural areas to get to a bingo hall to raise money for your 4-H club, you can get reimbursed for gas. You can be given a hamburger or, you know, if you need a small cash stipend, it is now constitutional to do that. That bingo game's not gonna get shut down. Um, the second thing that this is gonna do is it deals with, um, it, it deals with timing. So right now, if I start a nonprofit tomorrow to help out with the COVID crisis, I can't get a bingo or raffle license for at least five years. Wow. Uh, it, it's, once again, it's in the Constitution, it boggles my mind. And so what we did is we said, you know what, instead of five years, let's do three years. And then let's just take that out of the Constitution going on from, from here on out. So, um, so in three years, assuming everything goes well, um, if people want to get a bingo or raffle license, um, the legislature can lower that from three years to two years to one year or raise it from three years back to five if for some reason it, that's the magic number. Um, so really, once again, two simple things. Let, let your bingo callers uh, get reimbursed for the things, that, the things that they're doing to help raise money for charity. And two, uh, let's let uh, volunteer service organizations be able to get a license a little bit sooner. Okay. Uh, no, yeah. not, not rocket science. It's low hanging fruit. It's bipartisan. It got one no vote in the state house. Um, I, obviously, I wasn't the one no. Um, and we had urban, rural, and suburban people supporting this for all the right sure. reasons. So. Sure. Because every church likes to do that all summer long, right? Or they did. Um, so why is, um, why is the reimbursement limited to minimum wage? 
Well, this is, this is, this is where we get in the weeds and, and I find this fascinating. Um, so uh, the only uh, opponents of this, and, and they're actually no longer opponents of, of this, were uh, the for-profit gaming institutions, uh, better known as casinos. And they really see bingo um, and raffles as competition. And, and their argument was, well, you could be paying people six or seven figures a year to be going to run these bingo, um, uh, bingo games, which, you know, is a little ridiculous. And so the, you know, the, the bingo hall folks said, you know what, we just want to be able to give people a shift meal. We want to be able to reimburse gas or help them out with their day-to-day -day duties because, you know what, um, it's a real skill. It's a real skill. Mm -hmm. You know, people who are good bingo callers, people will come back for that. It, it's, it's more entertaining. It's more fun. And so um, what we did is we said, okay, you know what? The, the bingo folks are saying they're not going to be paying people out the nose. And the opponents said, well, then just put that in the constitutional amendment and we'll drop our opposition. And so we did. So, so that is, that's sort of the I won't say the short version, but that's the medium version of the conversation is um, we didn't want to make this into a fight. We wanted to make this into something about common sense and consensus. Right. That is a good story, though. I'm glad I asked. Um, you wonder what I do at the Capitol all day? <laughs> it's that kind of stuff. So. Well, I, I mean, I know that you have that kind of stuff. I mean, your whole history at the Capitol has been finding gaps and patching them pretty much. You know, I mean, it, that's not a very dignified way of saying it, but that's the way it's worked. So um, the uh, other thing I'd like you to explain more is this expiration date. I mean, that seems to be kind of a new idea that there's something in the Constitution and it's going to expire and fall out of the Constitution. So, so yeah, I mean, when I said two parts technically, you know, part two has an A and a B. And so the, the mm -hmm. part that expires is this this five year limit that's going down to a, th a three year or not limit but uh, entry point for mm -hmm. um, nonprofits? Mm -hmm. um, we're just ripping that out of the Constitution in the next three years. Um, and and long story short, the reason that we're ripping that out of the Constitution in, over the next three years is because once again, for profit casinos said look, you're going to get some fly-by-night organization. They're going to set up a bingo front, and really, they're going to do it for nefarious purposes. That doesn't, to be honest with you, pass my smell test. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't see a lot of bingo fronts out there. But what we said is, okay, we'll meet you halfway. Instead of just saying, we're not going to have a, a time limit on there, we'll, we'll compromise. The Constitution says five. We want zero. Let's just land in the middle and hit three. And after three years, let's let's just make it up to the lawmakers. Casinos, if you think we're doing a bad job, go in there and write a bill. You don't have to appeal to 55% of the electorate um, and vice versa. Um, bingo, uh, bingo charities, if, if you think that um, three years is way too long to wait because we're in the middle of a crisis and we've got nonprofits that would like to raise money without raising taxes, mm -hmm. then maybe it could be two years or one year or zero. Right. And of course, that's not tremendously helpful for the ones who are trying to do that right now. I happen to be talking to several people who are trying to start nonprofits, um, and they've got three, three years to wait. Fortunately, there are other kinds of fundraising they can do, but bingo is clearly the most fun. Um, <laughs> if you like letters and numbers, it is clearly the most fun. So. Yeah, right. Um, so... Uh, has this ever been done before, the idea that something gets moved from constitutional to statutory? That's an excellent question. Um, I should have asked you in advance. No, 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 that's okay. I, I appreciate you. You're getting the real honest answer here. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know that for sure. We've certainly repealed things. Yes. And I assume if you repeal something in the Constitution, someone could, by law, put it back in or modify it in some way and put it back in. Um, and so that's kind of what this is, is it's a repeal. Um, mm -hmm. 
And so, you know, we've repealed things like slavery, Amendment yeah. A, right? We've repealed. Um, and so, uh, you know, I've seen repeals. I don't know. I mean, this is sort of a modification and a repeal. This, this is like the fun stuff that, you know, adds, adds wrinkles to your brain, so. <laughs> okay. So it'll be repealed is the creation of the of a three-year statute automatic or does that have to be taken up all new by a subsequent legislature? So um, the way that I read it and, and obviously constitutional lawyers may feel differently and I don't know how many constitutional bingo lawyers we have but we'll find out um, is th there may need to be some enacting statute next year. Someone may have to write an, an enacting law to get this all the way through the process. But um, typically things are presumed to be constitutional until they're challenged in court. And so mm -hmm. uh, my guess is, is you may see a bill next year that sort of codifies and implements this. Uh, mm -hmm. But really the idea here is to make, to cut the red tape, make this simple and, and let things just sort of pass the smell test. All right, that sounds good. Um... What brought this to your attention? Is you were the sponsor of this bill, correct? Yeah, this is this is kind of a fun, nerdy, heart heartwarming story. But um, so eight years ago, when I was first in the house, I was approached by someone from the Moose Club, and please don't Elks folks, please don't get mad at me right now. Uh, but <laughs> he came to me and he goes, Jonathan, um, I've been doing a, a progressive raffle. Uh, which is, has nothing to do with politics. The, the pot progressively gets bigger. Also yeah, has to do with until marijuana. somebody wins. So, um, so anyway, he said, you know, I called the Secretary of State. They regulate this. He told me it was okay, but he just called me up the other day, Jonathan, and he said, you know what? I'm sorry, guys. This is actually technically illegal. Um, today will be your last day to do this. Just FYI, you're not in trouble because it was my bad call, but we have to stop doing progressive raffles. Um, so anyway, he called me up and, I, and I, I told this guy, you know, look, we're already halfway into the legislative session. It's my first year. I don't really, I don't feel qualified yet to run a bill on this issue, but I'll make you a deal. If I win my election in November, um, I will, this will be the first bill that I run next year. And so this guy's retired. He doesn't know anything about the law. We bring him down to the Capitol. He works with our nonpartisan bill writers. We write this bill. And uh, the very first thing I remember is uh, we brought him down to the Capitol and had him testify on this. And he really didn't agree with me on most of my politics. He would actually kind of challenge me. You know, I was working on an electric vehicle tax credit. He's like, you know, those electric vehicles, they're, they're just going to add wear and tear to the roads and we're not getting gas tax money from them. I don't know why you're doing this. Um, and the second, but so, but we found a way to work together. And, and the second thing that I got from this was when uh, I want to say it was the United Veterans Committee came to me and they said, hey, Representative Singer, we love your bill. And I'm going, what bill are you talking about? And they said, raffles. <laughs> our, our, the VFWs, the American Legions, these groups raise money and it's hard, but bingos, raffles, they do this. And so without raising any taxes, we're going to be able to do this. We passed that bill almost unanimously my first full year at the state capitol. And then I was the only one left with institutional knowledge because of term limits on bingo and raffle issues. And so I became the go-to person on all issues related to bingo and raffle. <laughs> it's my claim to fame. Okay. Well, I think you probably have some different ones too, but... Um... But yeah, no, you were talking about a different raffle bill before, because that yeah, was so in your first year. So that was I'm my, confused at this point. Yeah, so so that was my first year. It was a, it was a progressive raffle, and and it turns out, like I said, progressive raffles were illegal, um, and so we just clarified in state law that if you want to do a raffle where the pot of money gets progressively bigger, there's no winner necessarily the first day. You can do that. Um, Fortunately, that part was not in the Constitution. That was a statutory <laughs> change. We were lucky there. Um, there you go. It's just a clarification of what was in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. um, but now, you know, whether you're Moose, Elk, or Rotary, or your church group, or your 
temple or mosque. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you've got another option to be able to raise some money um, for, your, for your charities. Um, and once again, that's the thing about bingo and raffle is the winnings, there's a winner, but also on top of, you know, whoever walks away, you know, gets a little extra money for, for their gambling. But mm -hmm. on the flip side, the, the remainder of those dollars really go to really good organizations that are trying to help people. Mm -hmm. their organizations. Sure. Sure. They had to qualify as a charity. For five years. So Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't think of any more questions about this particular subject. Um, <laughs> that pretty much covers the story, and we are right at five, uh, 20 minutes, excuse me. Um, so again, it's C for charity, and Jonathan Singer endorses the, the constitutional amendment, correct? on yep. your ballot and it's going to be way at the bottom of your ballot so while you're looking down the ballot to find it vote on all of the things in between that's a good idea um and anything else you want to say before i thank you and excuse you you, you know we're going to see a lot of controversial issues on the ballot it starts with the presidential race but we'll be debating abortion tax cuts tax increases the national popular vote um, but if there's one thing that's going to bring people together this year, it's going to be this bipartisan push that I ran with a rural Republican to make sure that charities have the ability to raise money for their own organizations without raising taxes this year. So vote yes on Amendment C for charity and don't hesitate to reach out to me. And hopefully in the comments section, um, Marsha, you can put in the website and people can go click on the link and um, go interact with this a little bit. And Hopefully we'll do some good things for a good cause. Absolutely. Thank you for being willing to do this, Representative Singer. Um, good luck with your next career. And um, I always enjoy talking to you. So give me a call if there's anything you would like to be interviewed about. Um, well, I, I, I appreciate that. And, you know, uh, I'm sure there's a lot to do and a lot to talk about. And I, I look forward in, you know, at, through the end of the year of, of continuing to represent uh, mm -hmm. Longmont Lions and Allens Park, but I also look forward to be becoming a resident and a constituent and a citizen again and, um, you know, um, going back to the most important job, which is an engaged electorate. There we go. And not that you're not, I mean, you're still a citizen, still a resident and still engaged, correct? Uh, it's Plus, true. I, I just won't be my own boss, so. Yeah. Okay. Thanks again, Representative Singer. Um, and uh, I, I really appreciate um, everything that you've done for us all these years and appreciate you being here to get inside the ballot box with us. <laughs>